Varmt välkomna tillbaka. Då var det dags för nästa programpunkt som är något lite annorlunda än den förra tror jag. Och det är då mitt stora nöje att hälsa välkommen hit och kort introducera Ida Börjel. Och Ida är poet och översättare från Malmö och som några av er fick uppleva också igår en synnerligen innovativ och radikal workshopmakare. Om ni var med på universitetet då. Eh, och utan tekan så är hon också en av de mest eh, fascinerande och egenartade poeterna i Sverige idag. Eh, Idas böcker har väl förtjänt, eh, vill jag understryka, hyllats allt sedan hennes debut eh, 2004 med diktsamlingen Sond. Eh, hennes andra bok heter Skåne Radio och den kom ut 2006 och eh, var baserad på transkriptioner på, från eh, en när, på material från en närradiostation, eh, närradiosändningar. Och på samma sätt så skulle bok nummer tre av Ida eh, också bygga på material från en väldigt specifik källa. Eh, och den här gången handlade det om lagen och den juridiska apparaten som approprierades och transformerades i en samling som hade, har titeln Konsumentköp, lagen, juris, lyrik, eller lyrik från 2008. Eh, med viss följdriktighet skulle de här böckerna, böckerna också komma att klassificeras och beskrivas som en form av konceptuell poesi av kritiker i Sverige. Men det är en beteckning som jag skulle säga är alldeles för begränsad för att eh, beskriva. Nu tycker Ida också säger hon här till mig nu. Eh, så bra, vi är eniga där. Eh, Idas senaste bok eh, heter Ma och den kom ut på Bonniers 2014 och nominerades också till Augustpriset det året. Och det är en helt fantastisk bok skulle jag säga som undersöker, som arbetar med en processuell poetik kan man säga. Delvis inspirerad av den danske poeten Inger Kristensen och eh, den, en poesi som undersöker ett flertal teman eh, såsom moderskap, eh, natur och eh, djuptid. Eh, och jag kan bara uppmuntra alla som inte redan har läst den att göra det snarast. Eh, Idas poesi har också översatts i flera språk och i fjol utkom på engelska eh, boken The Sabotage Manuals på Commune Editions i Kalifornien. Eh, hon har också medverkat i projekt med konstnärlig forskning och hon har samarbetat med andra konstnärer på ett senast med David Buke i USA. Eller nyligen i alla fall. Eh, och jag tror faktiskt att Ida idag kommer att läsa på engelska också ur de nämnda manualerna, The Sabotage Manuals. Men det kommer hon att förtydliga alldeles strax själv hur det blir med den saken. Och eh, jag vill bara än en gång då hälsa Ida varmt välkommen hit idag. I think around seven minutes ago I was reading in Swedish. We've been going back and forth, but since we have participants um, who prefer English, I'll, I'll give my best, do my best with the English I have. So I'm not reading the Swedish text about money and mental illness and neoliberalism but I recommend it. <laughs> it's in this magazine, Glenta, and their issue about money. Intentional stupidity goes against human nature. The saboteur might need to reverse her thinking. If before she made sure to keep her tools sharp, she can now let them grow dull. What was brightly polished will now be scratched. What was carefully tucked away can now be left out. The assiduous grows full of indolence. The keen grows torpid. The firm begins to give way. When the saboteur starts to think backwards about herself and hers, she does not let the opportunity slip out of her hands. Anything might be sabotaged. What was firmly rooted lies rotted. 
what was cast solid is perforated. Into those openings, the saboteur sticks her fingers. A certain measure of humor in the following proposition helps the tension and fear dissipate. Commit acts for which a large number can be held responsible, so that it could have been anyone. Do not be afraid to commit acts you can personally be held responsible for, as long as you do not do it too often and assuming that you have a plausible excuse. Drop the wrench. There, there by that circuit, the little one cried and kept me awake all night. I must have been half asleep, so I dropped the key. The saboteur's weapons are the things she typically walks around with, like the martyr familias she is, like the workforce she is, the arsenal, the kitchen shelf, the trash heap, children's gear, the ordinary tool belt, the primary targets of the act of sabotage are objects she has daily contact with, nothing strange at all. Another variant is presented by universal, general, eternal opportunities to make bad decisions, to adopt an uncooperative attitude and in the blink of an eye make others do the same in secret, alone, but together. So simple, to place something in one spot instead of another, one control key instead of another. Communication. Now and then when I want a half day off and they don't give it to me, I let the belt slither off the machine so that it doesn't work and I get my half day. I don't know if you call it sabotage, but it's what I do. Delay. Give the wrong number. Happen to disconnect. Mutter. Make conversations difficult or impossible to understand. Distort telegrams so that additional ones need to be composed. Sometimes simply by changing a letter from minimum to maximum. Then they don't, won't know if minimizing or maximizing is at stake. A letter a punctuation mark to move a comma from access denied control to access denied control. At the screening of propaganda films, place two or three dozen large moths in a paper bag. Bring to the movie theater. Place on the floor in an empty row the moths will fly out into the theater towards the light. And when they climb over the projector, the film becomes an agitated, fluttering shadow play. So they will sound as though they were passing through a thick cotton blanket with mouths full of gravel, so that the line can no longer be used. So they do not move, but flutter, disturb the automated gaze. In the organization, <coughs> take your time. Ask to speak. Elaborate. Paint a picture in words. 
have many committees with multiple chairs, never be fewer than five. Place irrelevant questions on the agenda. Nitpick. Encourage self-control and caution. Appeal to common sense. Remind of the importance of avoiding ha hasty decisions. Picture distressing future scenarios. Children, are there any of you who have a silk dress in the family? Someone's mother who has a silk dress? A little kid dressed in rags in the front row squeaked. Sure, my mom has a dress like that. Really? Where'd she get it? My dad messed up the fabric and got to take it home. Follow the manual to a T. The leadership uses the manual to sue its workers, to release themselves from liability, to wash their hands of the manner. It is written into impossibility through the bodies in line to the dock in the morning, through the centuries and where the bodies once stood. The radio waves run warm in the game for today's temp jobs advertised via text to the uneducable educables, to the overqualified seasonals, their bodies under 40 and their way of dancing, tiptoeing through 24-7 availability, tiptoeing through homelessness, rootlessness, childlessness, but in a present, but in a present, but in a present that holds on in a present, that holds you in a present where there is one sales associate for every 700 applicants in sublets, three, four, five roommates, month to month, weekly run into the sand where she waits absolutely loyal with a breath of silence around her neck with a 300% increase in tuition. She works full-time to study part-time, effectively market-driven, with a hunger to flex her way out of the pointlessness, where the old become richer and the young poorer. During 36-hour shifts in the waiting rooms and the hallways of ER, through double bookings where one home visit begins before another one has ended, where one old-timer begins before another one has ended arm in arm, without responsibility, without teeth, with paper, with paper, with paper. In the cubicle landscape, Place important documents elsewhere. Make mistakes at the copier. Confuse names. Write the wrong address. Make one too few copies. Say that someone is busy on another line. Let the crops be harvested too early or too late. So the fuses blow as they are turned on at night, so they rot, so overtime is needed by the copier, so they short circuit when it starts to rain. The silk is there, the loom, the stone is there. Send up quantities of stones, the water is there. Drown them in water, the sun is there. Leave them out in the sun. Employer sabotage. Employer sabotage is antisocial by its very nature. Like the Phoebus cartel in the 1920s, like the EU paying a trillion dollars to stop vegetables from reaching a market, the Belgian farmers sprinkling truckloads of milk back onto their fields. The boatloads of Ukrainian wheat dumped into the Black Sea. And prices remain high in New York, Shanghai, London, Singapore. Rotting eggs, funny looking tomatoes, boxes of cereal. 
that iron dust in the Pacific Ocean, the industrial waste, the indecomposable plastic rubbish. In the countdown smart chip techno apoptos, the ink yet printer, the price set just below the expected threshold of how many will bother to return the product when it breaks. Anticipated margin of error, anticipated fatigue. In the ocean, the ocean. Prices remain high and in the ocean, and the profits remain and the ocean, the ocean remains. Seventy-five years ago, when clean silk threads were woven into the fabric, it lasted fifty years. Your grandmother's wedding dress became your mother's and yours if you marry. But today, one pound of silk to the dye house becomes three to fifteen pounds. And the gigantic vats of soup that stood there month after month without being washed oxidation blooming, various life forms, and if a mouse or a rat fell in, we fished them out and threw them aside before serving at the Waldorf, the Astor, the Belmont. The butter was sent back on the little butter dishes and we stuck our fingers in the butter and cleared out the butts and cigar ash and threw the lump of butter back in the butter jar, and the napkins from the tables and the syphilis guests and their belches were used to wipe the dishes, yes. Work 12 hours a day, seven days a week for two dollars a day in the Pittsburgh steel mills, and they say sabotage would destroy my sense of morality. It's all uphill from here. The fall leaves, fall leaf choreography, fall leaves fractal contours heaped in front of the main building. A regular Tuesday morning, any the frequency was what we call the building where the bad news was announced. Everyone who was there mentions one thing. Time had run past silence. Ten kilometers from the center. Silence. The gap. Internalizing. The factory the Colossus, to conceal the surrounding industry, the factory, to separate life in the factory from factory life outside the non-factory. The factory encloses and excludes. The factory, the projection, what is outside when I was going to be at the center of myself? What is in something else? It is not possible to think in the factory. In the stairs, you spread a tissue across your lap. Back when the general manager lived nearby, he was there so you could look him in the eye, not that you had anything to say during school drop-off at the grocery store. The suddenly discontinued fruit baskets. No one claims to know anything. The factory, the colossus, the factory outside, the factory, the hamster wheel. I sat at home to go to the Christmas party and be happy and celebrate with the employees didn't feel good. It felt better 
to be home. Thoughts came and went. Since we can't talk to each other every day, I have printed up little cards for all employees with our top three goals on one side and our basic principles on the other. The card they can carry in their wallet or pocket You go out, then as now, you have the placards, handwritten by the Russian youths. To say something when inflation has struck saying, say something when nothing makes sense in life, all words crash into the abyss, say something in absurdum, say something in silence, with the placards, this is not all there is. There is more. There is more. Who decides? Wash your hands. The bone is the body's best friend. Onward to a dark past. I've crocodiled, I crocodile, and I will crocodile. I carnivaled this town. So what? Some did it elsewhere. Is there something further to add? A. No comment. Is there really nothing further to add? B. Nah. Still, something? B. How long is a string? Where is the line between sound accounting practices and unsound corporate finance? This has nothing to do with sabotage. It's a promotion, kind of like the law of the jungle. We are the fat cats. A. No, but you disappear. Make yourself invisible. You have no contact with the money, if not in a briefcase with cash from Monaco. Your name is not on anything, a non person. You grab your chance. Anyone can do it if you have a little bit of geld in the pot. A clever accountant is essential in this racket. It's like poker, like Monopoly. You live in the zone, you have everything. Like in Dubai, in the zone, we have freedom of expression there. Inside the fence, you can say whatever you want, but there are things you don't talk about. It's this code we have. In Dubai, via Geneva, London, Luxembourg. Outside the fence, you cannot think aloud, but inside the zone, you can settle in and retire with your tax dollars. You become unreachable. You can say whatever you want. Really? A penthouse, a suit, suite, a sports car, some meetings, good doctors, obviously. Good doctors, surgeons. You're in the zone, you have everything. But you aren't somebody on a piece of paper. The Cypriot banks replaced the Russian mafia's lost currency with tax funds sanctioned and assessed by self-appointed accountants and who, at the behest of the state, determine the rules of their work. The trick is to constantly praise transparency. We are invisible because we leave no traces, or else we are too big to fail. 
the big four. The five, that's the bear, the wolf, the lion, the eagle, and the wolf. Or I mean the moose. The moose and the wolf, the bear, the lion, the hippopotamus. The hippopotamus kills more people annually than the lion, as you know. <laughs>